Hey guys, it's Peter from LostAngler.com. Today we're going to be telling a pretty big flock. Um, it's actually a humongous streamer style pattern. It's an earthquake. Hey, Princess, come here, baby. Come here. Lily in. Lily in. Hey, baby, look. Oh, ho, ho, ho. come on. Okay, cool. Anyway, we're going to be tying a pretty big streamer pattern. It's called an Alabama skunk egg. Right? And uh, what it is, basically, is made to mimic, thank you, kind of a lefty deceiver, but we need a little more bulk, a little more size, and um, this is what I call a copper nose, I mean, for the obvious reason, it's copper on the front. Uh, this is a, this is a long pattern, I mean, it's probably going to probably be a 30 minute video, done? Alright, I love you. Go, baby. Hold on. Yeah, okay, come here. Hey, let me finish, baby. Alright. Anyway, it's a long pattern. Probably going to take about 30 minutes to get done. So if you want to just skip through piece by piece by piece, that's cool too. Uh, but otherwise, I suggest grabbing a cup of coffee, grabbing a beer, pulling your fly vice out, and uh, we'll go through it step by step. I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, guys. Today we're going to work on a new pattern I've come up with. Um, I call it the Alabama Skunk Ape. You can call it whatever you want to. It's just basically a big old uh, bully looking streamer. And uh, we're going to start it out on a size 1 Gamakatsu. You could go up to a 1 aught. Uh, I've tied it on a 2 aught Gamakatsu. They're all B10S stingers, and they all look just fine. Um, the size 1, though, uh, is a good size. It's not overbearing on the size of the fly, and uh, it's got enough size to really hook and hold the fish. <clears throat> and kind of where this fly has come from has been since we've moved back to Mobile we're dealing with larger you having to use larger flies but they all have to be extremely weed proof um, fishing places like Big Creek Lake and uh, local ponds and rivers they're very very heavy in vegetation and to get the largemouth bass in the area to give it more than you know kind of a oh well there it is you know it seems a little bit more size is, is helping out so that's kind of where that came from so what I'm doing is I'm tying on a piece of 50 pound monofilament um, it's probably something like Shakespeare just the cheapest monofilament possible a large diameter makes a really good weed guard because it just stays stiff you know it's not something you generally want to use for either tippets or um, whatever else but for weed guards it works fantastic what we're painting on is a little bit of loon hard head and clear makes life simple. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to add a little Puglisi fiber. This is just basic EP fiber. And I've already kind of pulled it out and strung it along. And I'm going to tie it on about in the middle here. Like so. Just have to be careful with the Puglisi you got in the back. You know, it goes on the front part because otherwise it'll tie around the shank of the hook and you got to spend more time on tying it but it's worth the effect alright so we got that on the next thing I'm going to add in is a little bit of gold flash and I'm using gold right here just a little bit everyday gold flash boo. All right, and I'm using gold because <clears throat> it seems to lend itself really well So pull it out get a few strands of it I've probably got about four or five strands. I'm going to double over the tying thread and I'm going to nail it down. See how when I went over it, it kind of looped around the hook? It's not a big deal. You just pull it right on off. And boom, there it is. And I'm not really too worried about the length of anything right now because we're going to trim it all out later boom so it's a nice really long base next I'm going to tie in some green Puglisi same deal trick is just kind of pull it out of the bag nice and easy and there you go alright to that we're going to add 
some holographic flash boo and chartreuse once again four or five strands however much you feel is appropriate if you're fishing ultra gin clear water sometimes too much flash can be a turn off to the fish down here in mobile that seems to be just fine I got it picked up. Perfect. So I talk about where it loops around. Just got to be a little bit more wary of it. Boom! There we are. Now down. Double it over. And got a nice two tone color already. Starting out. <clears throat> Alright, now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to kind of pull and slowly clip along. And it's going to trim it down in a nice uniform fashion. I'm going to flip the fly over and do it in reverse. about two times as long as the fly is about all you want to do there we go as long as the hook very nice came out just fine a good flash perfect there you go. I think it makes it a little bit easier to see so you've got kind of a green color and kind of a not so green color Tan and green. Nice bluegill pattern. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add in some saddle hackle. You know, not quite as long as your EP fiber. I'm going to do it in three layers. First one is chartreuse. I just want to make sure all these are measuring up to roughly the same length. First one chartreuse. Next layer is going to be a nice ginger. So take a look at it. String it off. They don't have to be uniform in length. As a matter of fact, I kind of stagger them down. Like I just, I just like the effect. Ginger. All right. That's on there very nicely. Now, I've, now before I trim it out, I leave the whole thing just whole like this. So I can make sure I've got the exact right size. And that seems to make it a lot easier to come up with a really good setup. Ginger. Alright, very nice. That's on there. And the final color is olive. A nice dark olive. Once again, trim it out. Clip off the excess. Slide it on. And away we go. Now I'm using three, three, uh, three different colors to give me six pieces of saddle hackle for a reason. Um, as all this moves in the water, it kind of gives it a more natural look. Because as a bait fish swim, swim about, they, uh, they have a lot of different colors going on. Really interesting. Now we're going to end up with just a little bit of... Um, more of that holographic flash of boo across the top just kind of pull it out put it at an uneven length and then rock now the reason you do it at an uneven length is actually pretty simple um, it just gives different lengths at which all this is going to reflect 
so you got a whole lot of flash going on and if you're it kinda got turned off by flash I'm sorry just edit it to however you want to to make the fly work alright now we're gonna add in kinda thinly put on some root beer palmer shingle in medium not too much and the reason I say thinly is because you can pack it on nice and tight and it'll stand up real well but the way we're tying this you know I'm, I'm trying to make it so the materials in general kind of lose water whenever you're casting because otherwise it is just an absolute beast to deal with in the air and for me I've been using a new 8 weight rod and the new Airflow Ridgeline Bass and Musky Taper and it handles the large flies really well so if anybody from Airflow is watching this and you want to send me some free stuff, you know what? I, I, I appreciate it, guys, and thank you. I graciously accept. You can go ahead and send me an email. I'll send you my address. No big deal. But that being said, if you don't want to, I understand. It's your loss. All right, perfect. So we got it up to here. It's just giving us a little bit of room, a little bit of depth. Flip it around, and you're golden. Trim it off. Always be careful not to trim off your bobbin, which I have done on numerous occasions. So then I'm just going to tighten it all down. And bingo, bingo. And it's already a handsome fly already, so <clears throat> you're doing well. Next. I'm going to throw on a little bit of ginger saddle hackle, no excuse me, not saddle hackle, we're going to use um, ginger strung marabou and we're going to palmer it about the flock like you would on you know, say a steelhead or musky pattern. Trim it up. I've got something nice I can kind of tie on with. No hackle pliers here. Using your using your fingers is going to be the best way to go. And we're not using too much of this. Really, the reason we're using the marabou is because when the fly pauses in the water, the marabou sort of breathes a little bit. So I don't know that that makes a humongous amount of difference to the fish. But I certainly like the effect. Plus it allows me to add bulk to the fly without adding a heap of material. It's always a plus for me. Right, now we got that on there. I'm going to throw on the next color. And with that, I'm going to use a little bit of olive. Same thing. Pull out the olive. Oh, here's a good piece. Pull out the olive. Tie it on. Palmer it. Nothing too dramatic. Well, we want the ginger to kind of shine through. I don't like for the olive to overbear the ginger because most bluegill perch and what have you naturally have that nice color to it. All right, now that we're to that point. 
<coughs> we're going to add a little bit of olive midge flash to each side just add another layer Same thing on the other side Further nicely. All right, now for the next layer. It's gonna be a nice touch of bucktail. Pull it off. Pull out my guard fibers. Beautiful. Good deal. I'm just going to push it down and around on the fly so that when I tie it in it's already kind of gone around the fly body a pretty good bit Flip it over. And another nice tuft of olive bucktail. And we're going to repeat the same process. Trim out all your uneven fibers, like so. Make sure we're looking at roughly the same length. Push down over the hook. Bingo, bingo. Got it. Sounds nice and simple. I'm going to take my fly back over. Make sure I have a nice coverage, which I do. And. Now we're going to add in a little bit of brown. <clears throat> Alright, same thing. Pull out the brown. Leave this a little bit longer than my olive. There we go. Beautiful. Flipping it over, we're going to add orange with the underbelly of the bluegill. Or perch, or whatever's in your local waters. I suspect this pattern would work rather nicely for uh, pike as well. Though, um, 
or haven't gotten the opportunity to test it. Yeah. But if any of you guys are watching this and you live in a slightly more pike infested part of the world and you feel that I would, might be able to help you in ridding yourselves of this problem or at least in exercising them before I let them go um, feel free to invite me because I can't invite myself that would be just rude but if you invite me that's a totally different story very right, beautiful beautiful got a couple strays not quite perfect we just fine there we are all right now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in some peacock curl Nice tuft of it. I don't know that you can really have too much in a situation like this. Clipped. Very good. Bring everything back a little. Just to tighten it all up here. There we are. <coughs> Beautiful. Because sometimes that gets a little lost in translation. I'm going to add some black. Crystal Flash. The reason I want to do this is because me gives me a nice lateral line. And I've also found that when I'm fishing it in clearer water, I can pick up on that black, uh, black and peacock right there, and make sure that the fly is moving through the water appropriately. All right, beautiful. Alright, next we're going to add a couple other components. Alright guys, and now for our next part, what I'm going to do now, is now that I've got this peacock curl on here, just a nice large amount, I'll make sure it's all situated up. I'm going to take my scissors, right at the bottom, and curl it down. There we go, perfect. Gives it a little bit of depth to the peacock curl. And let me see what I need to continue to trim. Good deal. Perfect. Okay. Came out very nicely. <coughs> now I'm going to add some silly leg. I'm using copper. I'm using the full length of it. This is four strands. I just left it together. Like so. A few loose wraps to tack it down. Tighten up. Bring the excess up to the front. I had this orderly piece of peacock. It got to go. It had to go. Okay. Go to the front. Trim off. So leg. Same thing. I'm gonna do the same to the other side now. I do this to kind of add a little scaling pattern to it and because I like it and it looks cool and just you know <clears throat> so the legs add a little bit of extra motion but mostly because I like it and I think it looks cool so you can make up your own excuse to use it later that's mine feel free to use it so I've got that 
It adds a whole other layer to it. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we are. Alright, now, the next thing I'm going to add is a little bit of EP Sparkle Brush. Alright, this is in copper. So, let me take it, nail it down. Not to be too heavy handed with it. It does a lot of work on its own. Trim off a little bit of metal. There we are. And where it is left over? It's going to nail down. Alright, beautiful. And I'm going to grab my heckle pliers. And boom. Now, if you remember that Palmer chenille we put on there earlier, you may be going, well, man, what, what do you even put that on there for? I can't see it. And the reason I added it is because when the fly is wet, because of that gap between the marabou, uh, the tail materials and all that, you do have a little bit of a gap where you just you don't have a whole lot going on. So I put that there as a way to, when the fly has gotten wet and some of the sparseness of the material starts to show, you do have some sort of color and iridescence in there. Once again, I don't know that it makes a whole heck of a lot of difference. It just, I like it. So Feel free to leave it out or add to it, whatever you want to do. Knocking this off. Boom. Very nice. Coming up to the front now. To the eye of the hook now. <clears throat> I'm just going to take my scissors, pull out the excess. Just be easy with it. Same thing on the bottom, just bring everybody in. Everybody out. And this nice coppery flash has worked really well. Now I'm going to slide my 50 pound mono through. I'm going to make sure I've got a nice gap. Then I'm going to take, once I've got it roughly where I want it, trim off, nail it down. Make sure everybody's in line. And we're going to trim it all off. But we'll do that later. Right now, we're just going to tie this off and get ready to add the eyes. <clears throat> Alright. You can use a whip finish or whatever you like. I use two double half hitches. So that's what I like. And Dave Whitlock, he doesn't even use anything but a little bit of Zappa Gap. If you're using Zappa Gap or Clear Finish or whatever, it doesn't matter what you use. That's what's going to be a little bit more than anything else. So, don't let it worry you. Alright, we got everybody now in line. Where we want it. It's time to start adding the eyeballs. Now, I've already taken liberty going ahead and making some. This is just 
some I've made with a little bit of clear loon UV finish and some flat stick on eyes so any color you want super cheap easy to do takes about 15 seconds and you're golden so we're going to use the loon UV fly finish in thick and put it on right there we're going to take our first eyeball and kind of put it on there whether you use CCG or Loon or whatever it's whatever one you like um, I've used both but I've enjoyed using the Loon more and let me qualify that statement both of them are very good products I don't want to take anything away from the cool dudes up at uh, CCG but I haven't had as much trouble with the stuff staying tacky as I did with the CCG I'll rotate a little bit closer Perfect. So now then, put it back on track, and we're gonna add a little bit of that more CC loon. But now going back to the CCG and loon, I don't want to take away e anything from either company. It's just that I've had better luck with the loon not being. Tacky. I'm done with it. Alright, now we've got this in here. We're going to fill up this gap with a loon. really more than anything else this is what's really and truly going to hold these these eyes in the position we want them to be in so just make sure everybody's in line it doesn't have to be perfect and the rounder the head is the more it seems like to me the more side to side motion you have in the fly so this is an instance where a little bit of bulkiness with the fly seems to help. So 15 seconds here, flick it over. Do the same thing on the bottom. And the good thing about the CCG at this point is, is or the loon, excuse me, is that it's going to help hold that um, brush guard exactly where you want it. So that's a big plus. Zoom out. flip the fly over make sure everything's in line with where I want it this is also a good time to kind of if you have any inconsistency in your eyes you can see a lot of it through See how it's going to hold its position for you. Everything's going to be in line now.
sure you're going to have a few filler spots you're going to run into. Right all around, all over, and we're gonna let the CCG do its thing, or excuse me, the loom. As he's calling the CCG, <clears throat> but it is a loom product. Okay, guys, thanks for watching the Alabama Stone Cake. Okay. Um, we appreciate it. Like I said, if you skip through or you watch it all step by step, that's cool too. As you can see, today's filming was aided by the kids. So, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the water.